Welcome back, Love Nation. This is Nina. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to everybody that has been coming to my channel. Like this video, share this video, and hit that notification bell so you know when I drop my next one. We are going to go into our re-upload of the Rust investigation. As you guys know, Alec Baldwin has been recharged in connection to this fatal day on the set of Rust. And I am going to, again, go back through part two of the facts laid out during the initial investigation. It might actually give us a clue on how this trial actually might end up playing out and why they decided to go back and re-pursue these charges. Now, this actually did take everybody by surprise. After the initial investigation, he was charged but it was dropped. Then, after it was dropped, it was recently just taken back up this week. So, I decided to re-upload the facts that were initially found during the initial investigation. Again, these are just the facts. I will be reading through. And there will be a part three that concludes this that will be upcoming in the next day or two. Draw your own opinion as we read through these documents again together. And don't forget to thumbs up this video as this is definitely a case we are watching in 2024. All right, you guys, we're just going to go through these documents again together on this re-upload. Hey, you guys, welcome back. So, we are doing part two of the Rust movie investigation, and this is the summation of everything that was found on the Rust set as we wait to see who could be charged in this situation. Now, we've just finished number eight in part one. We're going to do part nine. So, Ryan Smith, producer, was identified as overseeing the overall production. A management representative for Russ was Gabriel Pickle, line producer, who directly hired individuals and crews, approved hours worked, and had authority to counsel or discipline employees in any department. Her immediate subordinate was Catherine Rowe Walters, unit producer, production manager, who shared similar authority. Also on the management team was Dave Hall's first assistant director, and safety coordinator who was a set manager and responsible for general workplace safety, who was peer in authority to Gabriel Pickard and Ro Walters. Alec Baldwin, actor and producer, and Joe, Joel Souza, director, negotiated with various producers to help create and fund the Rust project. Alec Baldwin's authority on the set included approving script changes and actor candidates. Alec Baldwin handled the re the pow pow and and set off the round that struck and injured Helena Hutchins and Joel Sousa. Hannah Gutierrez Reed reported to Sarah Zachary for direction on daily tasks. Sarah Zachary reported to Brian Norville. Brian Norville reported to Ro Walters and Ro Walters reported to Gabriel Pickle. Due to the nature of her position as the sole armorer for Rust, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed regularly corresponded with Gabriel Pickle directly via text message and email. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed performed armorer duties such as demonstrating that a pow-pow was cold or hot with Dave Halls. Dave Halls was also responsible for identifying and correcting hazardous conditions related to pow pow safety. As armorer Hammer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed was responsible for storage, maintenance, and handling of pow pows and ammunition on a set for training members of the cast who would be handling them. In accordance with Rust safety procedures and industry recognized safety practice. The armorer is required to be present whenever the pow pows are being handled 
and should have the authority to determine whether an individual requires additional safety training. However, Russ also required Hannah Gutierrez to perform the role of prop assistant to Sarah Zachary when the Pow Pows were not in active use. In an email conversation that occurred on October 10th of 2021, Gabriel Pickle informed Hannah that she was allowed eight paid days at the armorer rate in her contract to perform armorer tasks, and the rest of her time was to be pre- spent as prop assistant. Russ ordered ammunition with the intent to receive blank and dummy rounds from the BTQ Arm and Props located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The property master stated that Russ did not intend to have live rounds on the set. Live rounds may be distinguishable from the dummy rounds by either a small hole in the bass brass cartridge indicating that there is no powder, by missing or a dimple primer at the bottom of the cartridge, or by shaking the round and hearing the distinct clatter of the BB within. Unless a round is removed from its storage box or firearm inspected, it can't be verified as a dummy round. On October 14th of 2021, Gabriel Pickle emailed Hannah addressing armor and key assistant prop duties and stating, It has been brought to my attention that you are focusing far more on the armor and not supporting props as needed. In the said email, Ms. Pickle informed Ms. Gutierrez, who is Hannah, that the production and AD team have seen twice that there was a pow-pow left unattended after a scene. Wow. Ms. Pickle went on to state that she needed some type of check-in and check-out system in place immediately. Hannah responded by email the same day, stating that the armorer job was a very serious job. And since we've stated I've had a lot of days where my job should only be to focus on the pow-pows and everyone's safety, Ms. Gutierrez Reed later in the same email stated, There were working pow-pows on set every day, and those are ultimately going to be a priority because they are not, they are not, that's when um, dangerous mistakes can happen. On October 16th of 2021, there were two pow-pows misfired on the set of rust. In the first instance, Sarah Zachary inadvertently fired a blank round as she finished loading a 45 caliber revolver that was aimed at the ground to return the hammer to the close position and make the firearm safe. The operator must hold the hammer and depress the trigger, guiding the hammer to the close position deliberately. In the case of the first misfire, the hammer slipped from Ms. Zachary's thumb or fingers likely resulting in a firing pin on the hammer striking the primer which ignited the power powder and fired the blank round. The second misfire on October 16th of 2021 involved Blake Texaria, excuse me if I mispronounced that, who is the stunt double for Alec Baldwin and a lever action pow pow of unknown make and model. It is not known how the misfire happened, as according to some statements, he was alone in the cabin and in other state he was not alone. Hannah stated that Blake's only comment was, it just went off. Hannah Gutierrez described that it is probable the pow-pow fired by being placed onto the ground too roughly. On October 17th, Hannah sent a text message to Gabriel Pickle stating, hey, we're on day eight of armor days. So if there's uh, pow-pows after this, you may want to talk to producers. Ms. Pickle replied the same day, 
that there would be no more trading sick days. Ms. Gutierrez then asked to clarify training days, Ms. Pickle responded, like training Alec and such. On October 20th, 2021, Lane Looper, who was the first assistant camera, resigned, citing safety concerns, among other issues. Stating in an email to Roe Walters, during the filming of Pow Pals on this job, things are often played very fast and loose. So far, there have been two accidental discharges and one accidental SFX um, explosive that has gone off around the crew between takes. Mr. Looper went on to state, to be clear, there are no safety meetings these days. There have been no explanations as to what to expect for these shots. On October 21st of 2021, Dave Halls handled, handled the 45 caliber Colt loaded with what he assumed were dummy rounds to Alec Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin aimed it toward Helena Hutchins and Joe Susan, and a projectile was fired, striking Miss Hutchins and Mr. Susan. The conclusion. As a result of the inspection, OHSB determined that Russ was responsible for a serious violation of the New Mexico Occupational Health and Safety Act. While no specific state or federal OSHA standards exist for Pow Pow's use in the film industry. It is clear both the employer and the film industry recognize the hazardous associate the hazard associated with the use of Pow Pow's on movie sets and the potential for serious injury to employees. Further, Russ demonstrated the plain indifference to the safety of employees by ignoring recognized hazards inherent to the use of Pow Pow's and ammunition by failing to take appropriate corrective or investigation actions after two Pow Pow related incidents, misfires, occurred on October 16th of 2021, and after employees notified management that they did not feel safe with how Pow Pow's were being handled on set. Russ followed, failed to follow company safety procedures which likely would have pre prevented the accidents from occurring. Now, we will go into part three of this in a little bit. I just want to give you guys some more information. And the rest of this is going to go into some very key things as this in investigation has continued. Please like, share, and subscribe, and be safe, you guys. Till next time, enjoy your day. Bye, guys.